Okay, sweating out of our honey hole. That's nice, Doc. Real classy. Well. All right. Well, we need to get into this week's show. I want to remind all the patrons out there, if you uh, are a patron, make sure you download the Podbean app because that is how you get the ex- patron exclusive content. All the world class shows, the broad logic shows that we've done, the uh, Cowboys Ring Rat House where uh, Michael Irvin, where uh, Michael Irvin made a broad uh, sniff a line of cocaine off his dick. Oh wait, what? That didn't happen. That's all okay. hearsay. But anyway, but if you want the patron episodes, you got to download the Podbean app. So just a reminder out there. And then I want to shout out a couple of new patrons uh, at Chad J O U R N uh, at Greg. R H E A nine nine on Twitter at J Corzo eighty four and at B B S F L O W A K A Tommy. Thanks for becoming patrons. And uh, like I said, uh, you know we appreciate it. Uh, Greg is actually a Cowboy fan, Doc. He's from he's from well, the Dallas. Well, welcome on so. board, sir. Where's he from? He's from the DFW area. Oh well, I, hopefully I don't run into you anywhere. But thanks okay. for your patronage and come on board. <laughs> yeah. Check your text messages real fast. I sent you a, a Fergie piss pants. I didn't picture. get it, sir. I don't know what to tell you. I'm Man, having, your I'm internet, tell, your, I'm your cell coverage my phone. sucks. Well, shit happens. I don't know what you want me to do, pal. So uh, one last shout out. I do want to shout out someone on Twitter, at History of WREST. This guy's been posting some of the best uh, – gifs or gifs whatever the fuck they're called i've ever seen so uh, and he listens to the show so i wanted to shout him out man he's posting all kind of gifs and gifs of the nwa wcw wccw mid-south all around everywhere tons of fucking gifs so go check them out but that's it let's get into this week's show again nwa wcw november 22nd 1986 sponsored by you the patron if you are not a patron, please become one. Tinyurl.com slash BTT patron. We would appreciate it. So the show hope the show opens up. This is the go home show. We're on the doorsteps of Star K eighty six. And um as we get into the show, first off, Crockett is out there fumbling through his words, kinda like I do sometimes on the opening, and uh Shivani's out there with him as well. And then we got a uh, quick promo from Brad Armstrong and the Rock and Roll Express. Now, Doc, I had it queued up. Harper, I had it queued up, but I want to throw it at y'all first. Did y'all have anything from this? Because the only thing I had was Ricky is still rhyming and shit. Uh, I didn't have anything. I just <laughs> get the Rock and Roll hates transgendered people. Why do you say that? It's just when they do the, he wears a dress and. Ah, okay, now you're, gonna, now you're going to have to play it. Yeah, here it is. Boy, you can hear the excitement because Starcade is Thursday night, Thanksgiving night. Brad Armstrong and the Rock and Roll Express. The countdown is on, gentlemen, to Starcade. Right. Well, woo, I feel good today. How about it? Hey, man, coming up right around the corner of Starcade 86, brother. We're going to take care of business. Jimmy Garvin, you bad. I know you real bad. You come out here and talk a big fight, brother. But it's back up time. Thanksgiving Day, we got a lot to give thanks for. I think, I think Jimmy Garvin thinks he's too pretty. He's worried about being too pretty and not worried enough about what's going on in the wrestling ring. You know, I've heard a lot of stories about him. That's Ricky. right. That's right. His father just owned it because they wore his sister's clothes. Yeah, Caught him in the bedroom with a pair of pantyhose. Yeah, <laughs> Whoa. Like and our future's so bright. We need to wear shades. shades. Woo! Woo! In the cage match, Tony, for the world, for the world tag team titles. 25th silver anniversary. You see, Anderson's, we know what we're getting into when we crawl in that cage with you. Brother, we know we might not be able to walk back out, but one thing is for sure we are the champions, and when we leave that ring with no interference outside, we'll prove to you that we are the champions of the world. Woo! The world tag team champions, the Rock and Roll Express, along with Brad Armstrong. All right, so yeah, like I said, Ricky's still rhyming and shit. He's, he's got yeah. the rhyme there. <laughs> I picture I didn't really... <laughs> a Go young ahead, Marvin taking one of them pantyhose from back in the day when he used to be in the little, pel- the little plastic. Uh, eggs like the ones your mama used to buy and he's like sneaking in there putting on a goddamn pantyhose and his dad comes in and goes what are you doing man what the fuck <laughs> did you say the pantyhose and the little egg thing yeah, yeah the legs, the legs yes yeah. i do this was fucking pitiful for the 80s <laughs> they don't make those no more Shit. <laughs> how come how come we all know this but your girls our girls don't know who the Eagles are? The Philadelphia Jeez. Eagles. Jesus Lord. Oh man. Anything else, Harper? Expert nah. analysis. You can only get that on BTT, everybody. What do you what do you have, Doc? 
I think this is the genesis of jib- jiving and socializing. And you even Brad Armstrong was getting into it. But dude, we're heading down to the cage, and it's going to be on. So let's let's don't get lost in the details there. Yeah, right. We're, we got a tag and, team match for the world titles. And the future's so bright, you got to wear shades. Is about the most late '80s thing you could say. Yes. To me, or well, yes, I agree. To me, uh, Brad. I I know you talked about he might look like Kerry because of his hair. Brad mm-hmm. to me looks like his dad with the with with the hair. Like he just he just. I mean, well, he it is. I was about to say he looks like a young version of him, which he basically is. But he reminds me of his dad for some reason a lot during this era. He definitely looks like his dad in, in Smoky Mountain. Yes. That's what I mean. That's what I'm, mean. That's what I'm talking the, about. They, where's yeah. the wood paneling and the deer on the wall? <laughs> well, you know, you're right about that. Because that house was still in the 80s, and even though we were in the 90s in the Smokies. That house looked like it was in the mid to late 70s, pal. Well, okay. There you go. Uh, the first matchup on this week is Tully versus Alan West. Uh, Tully v- beats his ass and wins with a sling- slingshot suplex pretty quickly. Uh, I don't have anything else from it, Doc. Are you, or can we go to the next promo? I got nothing, pal. All right, Hulk, nothing. got anything? All right. Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express are coming out. Let's uh, listen in to what they have to say. I know the fans. Shut up! You Wait a minute. They're saying pumpkin here. We we should acknowledge that. They're saying pumpkin head all over the country because of what the road warriors did, throwing pumpkins around, saying that they're going to throw the Midnight Express off that scaffold just like pumpkins. Well, let me tell you something, Starcade 86 is going to be a big night for all of my men. Bubba Rogers is going to break Ronnie Garvin in little pieces, and then Night of the Skywalkers, 25 feet up in the air on that scaffold. Road Warriors, I'm going to tell you this right now. You take the former tag team champions of the world. You take two guys that weigh 300 pounds a piece and can bench press 600, and you put them up 25 feet here on a scaffold a few feet wide you tell them that they gotta have a fight that two can come down by the ladder but the two gotta come down the hard way and you tell them to work it out amongst themselves that's exactly what's taking place to win this match you gotta knock both your opponents off the scaffold down to the ring or to the floor and it don't matter how you do it or how you get it done let me tell you something road wars and i'm gonna be dead serious for this you look in my eyes right here the midnight express value their careers and their lives very highly and so do I. And so does Big Bubba Rogers. And I'm going to guarantee you this, Ellering, and you tell your men, because Ellering, you seem to be the only one with any sense. Whatever it takes, whatever we have to do, we're going to get the job done, brother. These men are going to be the ones using the ladders. You're going to be the ones to hit that floor. I'll, let me ask Bobby Eaton what he thinks about going up on the scaffold. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 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 He's going to get the job done. And we'll be right back. I love Bobby's response right there. You're asking me nothing in that Alabama voice. Uh, <laughs> Doc, what you, what'd you have from this? Dude, Condry just looked pissed off during that whole thing. And I'm telling you, the, you, the signs were there that he's burnt out. Um, I thought either that or he sold it great that he's really worried about this match. Yeah, that's I know. what I was thinking. The fact is, he's like, what, three months from just up and leaving the promotion? I'm trying to work reverse engineer the uh, – could we? Could Harper and I get in the classic wrestling time machine and go back and have an intervention with Condry and yeah. lay him down on the therapist's couch and let him tell us about his problems so maybe he'll stick around a little bit longer? He, but – Yeah. Go ahead. No, nah, they're – dude, they got their confidence back. They, they – Apparently, Corny was right. There was some training footage we missed because they're feeling confident, and I think the Road Warriors are in trouble, pal. Harper, what do you have? The best thing about that was 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 fucking Bobby. That yeah. me fucking nothing. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said fuck you on TBS without saying fuck you. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I, you know, I wondered like. I I would love to know this, and I, I mean I'm sure Shivani wouldn't even remember if you would ask him. But was was Bobby like was that really like Shivani supposed to ask him something? And maybe Bobby was supposed to respond, and Bobby was like, "Nah, fuck that. I I changed my <laughs> mind. You you can kick you can kick rocks and kiss my ass, pal. I'm not doing. I ain't got nothing to say. That was great though. And you're right though. Condry looks Condry sold. If he's if he's not acting right there, he sold that he was nervous about what's coming. Let me tell you something. I watched Starcade back last weekend. Man, like Harper said, Harper, how much money uh, would it take you to get on that scaffold? No, I mean, dude, you, you I, 
thousand. No, your your exact know. response to me the last couple of weeks has been fuck that. Yeah, dude, fuck. And and it's not getting up there. It's getting up there with the 1986 Road Warriors, who we're yes. not sure know that this is a work. I can't wait till we talk about it in a couple of weeks because it's later in Starcade. I just I can't wait. It's we're gonna talk. We're gonna have a long discussion about that match because. God damn, there's no way, like Harper said. There is no way. Oh, and here's the thing. That just was imagine. not the only one they ever did. I know, huh? <laughs> just, just they imagine. climbed that shit in other promotions and did the same shit. No thanks. Right. But go ahead. What were you saying? Just imagine what, well, I was just imagine. Just imagine all the joy we're going to bring all the, the army and the docaholics with their dead-end jobs when we talk about this. You're an asshole. You're an asshole, man. Screw you. All right. All right. Well, let's keep going. So after the Midnights, we have the most outlandish shit we have probably seen. And we've seen a lot of stuff between Dusty and Nikita coming up. Here it is. And fans, we are back as Starcade approaches. Let's bring in the superpowers. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, Nikita Koloff, First Blood, World TV title. This is the week, Starcade 86 throughout this country, throughout the land, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, Nikita Koloff, the superpowers, now united, has united a country. Now the four horsemen, all four of them face the biggest test of their entire lives. Their entire lives, now dear. Television land, radio land, media across this country, throughout the world are taking notes. Somebody in Spain and in Spanish are picking up the La Plume, ready to write this thing down. Slick Rick, Slick Rick is about as slick as a Rick could be. I ain't even going to say it. He's going to be slick when Nikita puts it on him. When Nikita puts it on him, he's going to know it's right, baby. I heard last week we found he come on and say only thing that my women like about you, Nakita, is you talk. Well, you know how come they fire. After they with these uh, space and mountain and they have a good laugh, then they come to Nakita and say, let me see you talk. Now, fire, I want to show you one more time. I want to show you one more time, fire. Take a good look, fire. Take a good look. <laughs> This is your last good look at Nakita before stuck in night. You see, I called right now about the five days left before stuck in. And well, in those last five days, you're going to be going. Am I going to be able to defend this title against Nakita and walk out of the champion? You're not sure, friend. I know this. American Dream know this. And the whole world know this. Stockade night, friend. I've said before, and I'm going to say one more time. Could be your last night of jumping. You know it is, baby. You know it is. And the whole thing boils down to tell about your first blood. You know what? Queen Isabella told Columbus. When he walked in, say, my boat is broke down, baby. The water, I don't know if I can make it another mile. She said, Chris, go discover that country and stand on it, baby. And that's what it's all about. The American dream, Dusty Rose. Let's go to the ring. Okay. Doc, you go first. Why do Nikita's... Why does Nikita's chest and head look orange, but his hands look at lily pale white? Please tell me that's not the only that not not what you took from that not that <laughs> fucking insanity that we just witnessed and heard and watched. Well, you've been I want to let you talk about it because you've been talking about all the pussy connotations for two weeks now since yeah. you watched it. So go ahead. Well, go ahead, Hopper. What'd you have? Did he he's about as slick as a Rick can be. I, I, you talk, yeah, I guess you're saying dick, huh? I guess I don't I don't I don't know where Dusty was going with that. What's not about that slick dick? <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay. Um, and, and then, if it didn't, uh, the kid say something about his tongue. Well, that's what I thought y'all were gonna pick up on, bro. Because like, uh, well, cause I listened to this earlier. I was like, no, nah, he didn't say because he's he's got that stupid accent. There's, no. there's just no way. No, he said and, he I, he was talking about his tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He he. Mm -hmm. Let me let me translate what he said. 
Nikita is talking about eating pussy. He said, after y'all ride Space Mountain, you come get my tongue. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but nobody that, can understand what the fuck he's saying, so it doesn't oh, matter. Bullshit, yeah. I understood it at 42 years old. Maybe not at 11 years old, but at 42, I knew what he was saying. You come, from, crazy, a, huh? you come from a Cajun ghetto. That's the closest thing to the mushmouth mush mouth nonsense coming out of his mouth. This whole shit was stupid. Okay. Christopher Columbus. What the, yeah, fuck? What the fuck was that about? <laughs> Dusty talking about discovering the new world in the Christopher Columbus reference. I was like, what are you talking about, Dust? Mm, this was not... I didn't like any of this. No, 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 no. <sighs> okay. Um, no. You didn't like it? I thought it was nope. great. Harper, what about you? It was... Uh, it, he... No, that's Harper trying to say no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Harper, feel, Harper feels Nikita's about seems different. He's, he's he seems right. like there's a, there's a, a lot more personality to him. He feels Harper feels about this segment like he did all those stupid, rotten, stinky hillbillies down in Georgia at the last Wildcat show. Jesus oh, Christ, huh? God, fucker, was that bad, huh? It was that bad. I mean, like legit white trash rednecks. Wow! And those are and those are the high class people compared to the Smoky Mountain folks. So imagine what that's oh, like. Jesus, I mean, it, Jesus, that's I'm, the people I'm that that's the outside. And it's like old, beat up, like uh, 1996 Saturns with the with the the fucking faded Atlanta Brave bumper stickers on it. That's like 20 years old, and it's like fuck, man, Chipper Jones, man. Yeah, what uh, the fuck am I? These people are the rich cousins that the people in the Smoky Mountains drive down and try to borrow money <laughs> from when they need more. Money. <laughs> Jeez, you're always and then because they're and because they're pissing and, everybody well, off. And then because they're cousins, they just decide, well, let's don't borrow money. Let's just get married. <laughs> let's just marry it to the family, so we won't have to go anywhere. Well, right. it goes back to the question Dutch said: if you if you if you get divorced from what did he say? If you get the, if if a man divorces his wife, does that still mean they're cousins <laughs> or sister mm. and brother? Dutch was telling some zingers on that shit, man. Oh boy! All right, so next up we got Brad Armstrong versus Bill Mulkey. Uh, Brad wins in a quick match. All of them are quick, obviously. Uh, Hopper, any thoughts from this match? Hey, what's with this ref? Scrappy looks McGowan. Like fucking, looks like one of the guys that works like at a carnival that's gonna like guess your way to something. Well, the carnivals and wrestling have a lot in common. It's all carny ah. bullshit. Yeah, yeah. That's Scrappy McGowan. He's going to do a lot of matches at Starcade too, so you better get used to him. All right. Yeah. He does look like he's carny, though. I got to agree with yes. you. Yes. Doc, anything from this match? No, sir. All right. Um, I'm gonna. We're gonna take a vote on this. Paul Ellering. Are we playing it, Doc? Yeah, nice. I thought. It, I thought you. I think you might want to. Okay, I, I had a note to, to, to say yes. I just wanted to take a vote from all three. So that's two. Yep. Here it is. Early in the program, I talked to Beautiful Bobby what he thought about being up, and he wouldn't give me a response. I think they're concerned about being 30 feet in the air, Paul Ellery. And maybe some of the statistics came out. You know, Tony, I've been studying. Let's just set aside the study, the theory of quantum. Let's get down to physics. Let's get down to weight, distance, and height. Yeah. I have calculated that at the distance of the <laughs> scaffold to the ring, the average speed of each contestant that hits that ring will be traveling at 86 miles an hour. Woo! Think about that, Jimmy Cornette. 86 miles an hour. That's right. Think That's about right. this. Humpty Dumpty went up the wall. Humpty Bobby, Dumpty Dennis had a great fall. You're never going to get the best of us. You're never going to get the best of us, Jimmy Coronet. On Thanksgiving Day, five days away, you're going to get the worst of the Legion of Doom. Remember this, and remember it well, 86 miles per hour. The greatest night ever, Starcade 86, the Legion of Doom, Atlanta, Georgia. We're going to come, we're going to stand high. And we're going to see Humpty Bobby and Dumpty Dennis have a great fall. 86 miles per hour. Man, when we come back, we'll take a look. All right, Doc, what would you have from it? First of all, Ellering's out there giving a physics talk. 
And there's that one woman yelled. She didn't have a clue what he was talking about. Nobody <laughs> in that room did. And I thought that was Ellering's best promo all year. I had something similar. What did you have, Hopper? You think that it, that was true? That fucking 86 miles an hour? Who cares? <laughs> it's a great story. <laughs> Hell no, but like... And who, who, point, in that, yes. who, who in that room was going to dispute it with any contrary evidence? Yes. You I did, just think... Well, no, I, I ain't no. going to say that. Well, say it. well no. no, go ahead and say it. Say it. We're, we're unprofessional for a reason. What? All right, well, you may want to get your edit button ready. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't... One of my favorite podcasts is the, is the stud cast. Yeah. But I don't for a second truly believe that a nine-year-old was left in the desert of New Mexico <laughs> to kill rabbits. But it's a fantastic story. And I've heard him tell it three or four times, and I listen every time because it's great. And I, it's he's such a good storyteller. I don't really care if it's true or not. I don't know, bro. I, I believe I believe some of that shit because, man, people, it was a different world. Like, I think of the shit that, like, we dealt with as kids and think of the generation before us and before that. Ron's old, man. They didn't have child protection services and all the shit they had nowadays. Parents used to rough their kids up. Okay, so here's the deal, pal. Tough, tough love back okay, in so, the day. And again, let me say this. Ron Fuller is a is an ace storyteller. Oh, hell yeah. I love a, a former guest. Love the work he does. It is top shelf. But here's the problem I have in his story. How many nine-year-olds have you ever met that could walk and chew gum at the same time, much less survive on their own for three months? And I don't care what period of history. I think we've regressed as a society in many ways. And so I think, what you're saying I think, is you I think make- you and I at nine-year-olds could handle ourselves a lot better than your kids ain't nine yet, but the nine-year-olds of today. So you're saying you want to make America great again. I got it. What the hell's that got to do with anything? I don't know. We oh, should probably whatever. get back to wrestling. Book it, bitch. All people I'm don't saying like is people today's don't like nine it. today's nine year olds are too woke. So <laughs> they're not as smart as the old school nine year olds. People anyway. don't like it. People don't like it when you talk politics, Mike. Oh no, I mean they don't, they, nobody does. It, the pe- people listen to this show to escape politics. Oh, okay. What well, do you think about gun to- control? <laughs> shut, shut up, Harper. Let's no. get back to the ring. <laughs> this whole weekend, it was about nothing but uh, uh, Black Panthers and fucking AR-15s. Two things that should never go together. That's mm. what Mike told me. <laughs> okay, now he's lying. All right. No. All right. So the next match up is Crusher Khrushchev versus Keith Patterson. Crusher wins in under a minute. Same old same here. A Russian sickle. Doc, anything from that? I may have fast forwarded through this because I don't remember this happening. It wasn't well, you much didn't miss fast anything. Oh, you were to say you didn't miss much. Fair enough. After Crusher is Paul Jones, and I think Paul Jones is good here. So I had planned on playing it. What did you really? Have? Well, he's fired up. If, he's yes, hot, if, if nothing else, it was because of what he said that you would not hear during today at all. Play it. Hit play. Here it is. Well, we mentioned about Starcade right around the corner, and you saw from our control center the 12 matches for Starcade that have been signed. The two host cities, Atlanta and Greensboro, and then, of course, selected locations around the country to see it on the giant closed circuit screen. Starcade 86, the Skywalkers. Many big matches. One of them is the hair versus hair. This may be the last time we see you here on this program with your hair. It's getting down to the wire, and this is it. And let me tell you something, Wahoo McDaniels, you're going to lose your first draft match. I do not put good money and turn it into bad. Ravishing Rick is going to beat you, Wahoo. And Jimmy Valiant, I'm sick and tired of messing around with you. This is it. You can get Big Mama all you want. But let me tell you something, you love her a lot. But women are a dime a dozen. You can find mm. women every day to wash your clothes and do everything for you. But let me tell you, you as much as you love her, you better get used to her being a bald-headed geek. And as far as getting money for Nanny up in a cage, you haven't done that yet. You think by Nanny up in a cage that you have a green light and you can cut my hair? Well, you better think again because it's dark game. You're going to see what it's all about. Let's go to the ring. 
<laughs> the, way <Tony laughs> looked, the way Tony looked at him, like, this motherfucker's nuts right now. Uh, Doc, what'd you have from this? He's fired up, dude. He's hurt. His hair is on the line. And you know what? It's not the greatest promo of all time, but if it ain't going to be scripted and we're heading into Starcade and he's down the card in a feud, that promo works just fine for me. I thought he was good, man. I mean, he's all Paul right. Jones. He's all right. Well, I th- I thought, let me tell you what made it for me. When he said women are a dime a dozen and you can find anyone that will wash your clothes, well, that's I, just thought, a shoot. I thought that yeah. was a great line because – We've heard Arn talk about talk about you know a woman's job is in the kitchen and making babies, and I just think that that was a great insult. Look, once why we you get women this... back in the kitchen and our nine year olds tough again, we'll be great again, pal. I get it. We exactly. will. Exactly. We will. I'm telling you, Harper said something. <laughs> Harper said something. I don't know, like I don't know, five six months ago on the show, he said, "Bruh, you know what the problem is nowadays." People are woke now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're dealing with. We got a society full of woke folks. Bunch oh, of boy. woke bitches. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> with that said, uh, so after that, we got Manny and Rick Rude versus Bill Tab and Brody Chase. Manny and Rude win, obviously. Manny hits the flying burrito. I had a question, though, for both of you. I wanted to see if you remember this because I saw it on Worldwide this week. Do y'all remember what Manny and Rick Rude's entrance music was as a tag team? No. From back then? No. It is, it is, we will, we will rock you. Okay. And I thought, like, when I was watching Worldwide, I was like, damn, that's perfect for them. Because that shot A shit for Rick Rude is, eh. I, I mean, it was fine, but... You know, you'll never see that on the network if they put that on Worldwide. I can tell you that. Oh right hell now. no! <laughs> Who knows what the hell they'll dub in for that, or they'll just cut the entrance all together so they don't have to worry about it. But yeah. So uh, anyway, Manny and Rude win. Thoughts from the match, Doc? If any. They sure look dominant. Of course, Harper. Anything from you? No. Now remember, Rick Rude is going to be facing Wahoo in an Indian strap match. Who? So we will see that. Welcome, Wahoo. Nobody- Wait, how come nobody can say Wahoo McDaniel? Wahoo McDaniel. What did what did what did I say wrong, Doc? I'm confused. No, every wrestler that comes out there calls him Wahoo McDaniel's. Oh, with an S on the end. Yes. I've never noticed that. It would be like if I called you Mike Mill. Okay. Is that supposed to be funny? I'm just wondering why people can't talk right. Oh, all right. I hear you. Well, let's keep it moving. We got JJ, Tully, Arn, and Oli up next. Here it is. Mm. Yeah. James J. Dillon, members of the Four Horsemen, the Andersons, and Tully Blanchard. Well, it's five days and counting down to Starcade, the big occasion. A lot of questions are going to be answered in five days. Sports writers are asking me. They say, Ric Flair, can he withstand the awesome Russian sickle from Nikita Koloff? Well, let me remind you, the nature boy Ric Flair survived the plane crash. They said he'd never walk, let alone ever wrestle. He's climbed back in the ring and become the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. So let me ask the question. Can Nikita Koloff with those legs that barely maintain that massive chest and those big bulging triceps, can they withstand the awesome power of the figure four leg lock? The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes and Tully Blanchard. The talk is over with. And Dusty Rhodes, all that shucking and jiving and boogieing that you like to do isn't going to help you because it's a race to the finish line, first blood, and we plan to take you out. Then the Rock and Roll Express, sure they got the belts, sure they got youth, sure they got speed, but the Andersons got experience, the Andersons got size, and they've been there so many times before. They're awesome. I tell you what, Rock and Roll Express, Dusty Rhodes... And that big one, Nikita, y'all better get ready. Mark it down as your last day on earth. 86, I said, was going to be the last day for Dusty Rhodes. And 86 is going to be. And Starcade might just as well be the place. It's as good as any. And when I'm talking about Rhodes being through, we might as well include the Rock and Roll Express. And we might as well include Nikita. Because they're all going to go down at Starcade. We're horsemen. Diamonds are forever. And so are the four horsemen. Yeah! <laughs> okay, let's go back to the ring. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, we caught the Midnight Express music there as they're getting ready to face off against Art Pritz and Vernon Deaton. Let me just say it right now. Midnight wins. But, Doc, what would you have from the J.J. Tully, Arn, and Ole promo? And keep in mind, we are going to hear from Ole on Worldwide in a minute uh, when we get to it. So uh, what you thought? What do you think, Doc? I, I just... When the facts are laid out, I don't see how anybody else has a chance at Stargate. The horsemen are ready, and people are going to get hurt. Um, I was just wondering, like I would have, it would have popped me if Ole took over and started talking in Rob Fuller voice. The, them rock and rollers are pretty little fellers. I don't know if I want to <laughs> fuck them or fight them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm I miss Robert Fuller and Smoky Mountain, man. Boy, yeah. no I really do. He was so good. God, he's so good in Smoky Mountain wrestling. It's just a small part of his career, but he was so good. Harper, what'd you have from this? He just uh he just fucking made a factual statement. They have experience in fucking size. You know? The y'all, only- might, y'all might yeah. be young and and the hottest thing going today, but y'all ain't us motherfucker. And that's Man, a I'm just, for you. I'm sitting there. Yeah, that's a problem for them. I'm sitting there watching it. I'm just like, man, that oldie, he's just a old fucking curmudgeon. And God, man, the horseman. What did they really, say? Oh, what did it say? I can't even remember it's what still, it said. It's, it's the one. Oh, my God, if you hadn't said it. Um, <laughs> I'm that good or something like that. That damn good or something. That yeah. Damn good, yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm thinking to myself, boy. They might actually sweep the belts, man, at Starcade. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Because, I mean, you think, know, you got to be thinking to. that. Yeah, they're the odds-on favorites, pal. P- pretend pretend like you haven't seen it before, and it's your first time watching it, and we're going into it, and it's happening this Saturday or this, you know, Thursday, Thanksgiving. Man, I know I was thinking, shit, man, they always win. Dude, they're going to win all them belts because they're the bad guys. That's how you thought yeah. back then. So anyway, um, all right, we'll keep going. Doc, did you have any notes on the Midnight Express defeating Art Pritz and Vernon Deaton? I don't think so. Yeah, Harper, you? I, I like the finish with the Boston Crab, and he jumped on him from the top rope. Oh, no kidding. With the mm. knee drop, it, and he <sighs> and the guy was knocked out. <sighs> no kidding. Midnight Express, man, one of the best ever. One mm-hmm. of the best ever. All versions of them. Well, I consider the versions, obviously, uh, Dennis Condry, Bobby, and then uh, Stan Lane and Bobby. But anyway, we'll keep going. So, uh, hey, I want to remind you, if you're listening to the show on YouTube, this is just one portion of the show. To listen to this show in its entirety, you can find us anywhere you get your podcast from, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, TuneIn Radio, just by searching Book in the Territory. Subscribe however you get your podcast and never miss a show. Uh, like I said, Uh, The thing about it is, like, the interviews that we do, like, next week I got Bo James part one on. He's coming back to talk some Ron Wright, some Ronnie Garvin, because he's real good friends with Ronnie Garvin, some Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. I got Bo coming on next week, so that won't be on the YouTube version. You'll have to download it from uh, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, TuneIn Radio, all that good stuff. And as Doc said earlier in the show, before we got to the NWA section, Doc, what happens when we get to 200 five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts slash iTunes? Uh, the BTT broads. We have a party. The BTT broads. Oh yeah, we bring the bitches on. Yeah, we bring yeah. the broads on. So we're going to do a, uh, a BTT broads recording, and we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, it'll be a lot better than me and my wife watching the Women's Royal Rumble. Which, if you're a patron right now, you have access to that. The worst podcast known to man. People are being nice, saying they enjoyed it. I don't know what. I, I, I mean, I guess there were parts that were semi funny, but to me, they were the, the shit. What's wrong with What's wrong with your with your Bruh, squad? We're watching. <laughs> we're one of the things she says is we're watching this. She somebody comes out. Becky Lynch comes out and she has no clue who she is, and then she says something to the effect of, um, "How did she say it? Uh, is she a good person or a bad person?" Mm. I just like took a deep breath. She doesn't, yeah, like she doesn't know heel, fate, all that good stuff. So it was a challenge to get through it. Uh, but anyway, let's keep going. We got a promo coming up next. We got. I need to play this between. This is Dutch. What the fuck. Mm-mm. What? The no. Fucking village. The fucking village people. How are Bruh. you gonna have? Here's the thing, and here's why Bruh. you don't play it. How are you gonna have these four guys out here, and the only one that doesn't get to talk is Dutch? Bro, right. Well, bro, hold on one second. I'm glad y'all said that. I wasn't going to play it for the promo as much as I wanted to play it 
to paint the picture as they were saying these things of what we have out there. So let me stop you for a second. We got a fucking Nazi, we got a Native American, and we got two cowboys. And a Mexican. But well, but he's but uh, but uh, he's not out there. Right, Hector's not out there with him. So, but again, we got a Nazi, we got a Native American, and we got two cowboys. This shit, this shit look like a community college <laughs> class catalog <laughs> with a with a Nazi attached to it. I mean, when you're young, your mind doesn't process stuff the way it does when you get older. Right. And Are now that I'm older, bad guys. Right now that I'm older, I'm like. What the hell am I? What what is this? Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead, Harper. You were about to say something. I don't know. You, you got two cowboys that look like they're fucking extras from fucking Urban Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got a fucking Indian that looks like a, a you know the fucking uh, Chiefs fucking mascot, and there's a goddamn Nazi <laughs> that looks like he's from a fucking Captain America comic. <laughs> And again, Dutch is the one that looks the youngest by far. <laughs> the other part is, Dutch in Bobby Jagger's attire as a cowboy is so not cowboy looking. Because they got these bright colors on. It's, it's the like, 80s, the, pal. Neon it's like cowboys. the costume cowboys. Mm -hmm. What do you think Urban Cowboy was? You have no right, clue about that. That's what they look like. They're from well, fucking Urban Cow. You see him like in the background drinking a Lone Star. I guarantee you, Mike's never seen Urban Cowboy. I really? bet money on that. I Get, think the I have. Get in the truck, sissy. Get in the truck, sissy. That's no, one I of the best movies. That's one of the best movies ever. Okay, you're yeah. you 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 always speak in hyperbole. Let me just put that out there for the patrons, uh, everybody out there listening. You you always My aunt used to live down okay. the street from, from fucking Mickey Gilly. Okay. Pasadena. There you go. Here's a here's a poll question for you then, pal. I got for a the, poll for you, pal. Right. Put this on the on the on the page. What's a better movie? Urban Cowboy or Menace to Society? Oh, Menace to Society hands. <laughs> and down, the man. army and the army's gonna tell you real fast how you're wrong. Oh, you're full of bullshit. Menace to Society, hands down. I love Urban Cowboy because when you watch it now, they're all just white trash. God. Because he's he beats out there. the shit out of her. No kidding. And then they get back together, yep. and she's fucking some ex-con, and then it's just like, what the fuck? And he's a dirty <laughs> piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> they're robbing the they're robbing the juke joint. Yeah, that the, they're fucking robbing Gillies. Somehow Ooh. we went from talking about a Nazi, a Native American, and two urban cowboys to this. It happens. But I will repeat, just wait till you see the Nazi and the Mexican uh, tag together at Stark 86 next week. I think it's in part one. Just wait. Just we'll wait. fucking wait. We'll wait. Just wait. Can't we wait. will keep going for right now, though, because next up is Doc's favorite person, and it is the nature boy, Ric Flair. Woo! So let's hear what Rick's got to say as we go into Stark 86. We're just about to the point now, five days away, when all the talk is over. It's Ric Flair, Nikita Koloff, in the ring for the World Heavyweight title during Star Game. Tony Schiavone, there are a lot of times that I'll walk out here, and I'll really fire up because I, I like the people throughout the wrestling world to feel the emotion in Ric Flair's great mind and even greater body. But this time, Tony Schiavone... I'm going to be real cool, and I'm going to break this down for you. Jim Crockett Promotions, and you ask any wrestler and any federation, anything in the world, Jim Crockett Promotions puts together Starcade, and it's the greatest wrestling event of all time. We're talking about a gross gate of maybe 15, maybe 20 million dollars. We're talking about a viewing audience of over a hundred thousand people. We're talking about the premier wrestling event in the world today. And Nikita Koloff, in 1983, I walked the aisle for the first time against Harley Race. And I was going after this. And I was nervous. I was scared to death. It was my second chance 
to be the world champion. And I was scared to death. I know what you're going through. So when you walk out here and tear off your shirt and flex your muscles, you're not doing it for some Johnny come lately. You see, I don't care if you're from Russia. I beat up people in Japan, Yugoslavia, Tokyo, China, Spain, all over Europe. That's my job. This says world heavyweight champion. Don't care where you're from. In other words, it's my job to beat you at Thursday night, five days from now. Woo! I'm going to walk that out. I'm going to make a million dollars, and I'm going to beat the big bad wolf. Woo! Let's go to the ring. Hit the tagline, Harper. Jesus. Yeah, that was fucking great, huh? I'm I like sitting how there, I'm sitting there the watching shortest... as it play. He's, he's so amped. Go ahead, Doc. I didn't mean to cut well, you Well, and that's what's great about it is because he comes out and he goes, I'm just going to be calm and cool and tell you how it is and then immediately start yelling. <laughs> 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 and I love it. He's like, I don't care that you're Russian. I beat people up all over the world. Bro, he was I'm so I'm the world right champion. There. That's my job. I was nervous when I was trying to beat Harley Race. Dude, he hit it all. Mm-hmm. I've been where you've been, and guess what? I was nervous, but you don't have what it takes because I'm me and you're you. Yeah, fuck you. I don't. I don't know what else he could do right there. He just he spoke just, the truth. He just, he just said after after that nonsense Dusty and Nikita did in the back. Jim Crockett was like, "Damn, that really wasn't what we're looking for." And Brick said, "Don't worry, I got this." I mean, he. He basically gave him a goddamn gospel sermon about <laughs> when he walked in to beat Harley Race a few years ago, but it, it, you know, and uh, and how that was, and and how he's been around the world, he's beat everybody and whatever. He's basically, I've been here before, and that's that. And I'm, uh, you know, you're the newcomer, I, man. Like that <laughs> wasn't that wasn't that wasn't like a top five promo of all time, but I, it's that, as no, good as but it's, it's gonna just... get. It's just how it's done. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, man. Anything else? No. So after that, we got Arn Anderson versus Tony Zane. It's very quick. Arn wins with the Gord Buster, which you'd expect. And then we got one more from uh, the uh, horsemen out there. All of them are out there this time. Mm -hmm. Rick, Oli, Arn, Tully, and JJ. I'm going to play that. Here it is. And right here, there you go, Rock, showing the unity, that's what it's all about. Go ahead, jump in there. All right. How about that, Tony Schiavone? The four horsemen, that's what it's all about. The mastermind and all the talent. The new world tag team champions, only Lord Anderson. The new world TV champion, Tony Blanchard and Nikita. They're all going to walk out and watch me take the single. Get up and put the figure four on you yeah. and break the skinny leg. Here it goes, Tony Giovanni. The Anderson are in the attack position. You check our record in the cage. We broke legs. We broke arms. Our record in the cage is impeccable. New world tag team champions. Tony Blanchard, first blood. His specialty is laying people open. We know how you cut, Rose. You cut easy. Case closed, new world television champion, and then you overdress cue ball. You come out here with your sweater tied around your neck and your pleated pants, and we're going to show you why my cousin, The Rock's cousin, Rick Slayer, did what he does better than anything else in the world is protect that world championship belt. You see, cue ball, what you have is a big mouth and a big ego and a lot of aspirations. You've got a lot of talent, but my friend, you've got in bed with a full horseman, and when you're in bed with the big dogs, Dusty Rhodes or nobody else can help you. Fans, we'll see you at Starcade Thanksgiving night. Well, we better, get a, we better go get a ticket, pal. We can't yeah. miss this. <sighs> Bruh, uh, I mean... It's a shame that, that Arn's not going to win a Rolex here. <laughs> um, Damn. So, I don't know. I'm kind of speechless. They they just you got to remember. So this isn't a syndicated show. This is this is TBS. 
I don't know if they could send you off any better or to the national audience that's you know going to be out there. I just I don't I don't know. If <laughs> well, I guarantee you, when I was twelve, I'd have been like, well. That sounds like a great show I'm not going to get to see. Yeah, really, huh? <laughs> Man, fuck. I don't even know yeah. why you're telling me to call the cable provider because I don't have fucking cable. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have cable. I don't know. I'm, I'm, and then I'm going to get a spanking if I ask to spend fifty four ninety five on this shit. Well, no. You, but even then, the only way to see it was at the closed circuit locations. Oh, yeah. Never mind. That shit, that shit ain't on cable. My parents would have been more likely to spend the 55 bucks to be able to stay home and watch it than to drive me somewhere and sit there while it was going on. And all of it was out of the – and every bit of it was out of the question. Of course. (laughs) Because they were put out – they were put out that they were at their parents' house or one of their parents' house, my grandparents' house, and it was on TV for free in front of them. Yeah. Fuck you, mom and dad. That's nice. That's that's, that's real. That's real nice, Doc. Hey, Doc. Let me. Let me. I forgot to shout out a couple of patrons uh, earlier. I gotta. I gotta do that real quick, and then we're gonna do the Rolexes. So, at Mitchell J O H N S eighteen. I appreciate that, and I wanted to shout out also Jesse Lucas. Thank you as well for becoming a patron. Uh, if you're not a patron, again, it's tinyurl.com slash Patron. Get access to all the patron-only content that's out there. And then I want to shout out the patron Hall of Famers, Jesse L., Joe Ice, at D-N-E-I-W, Alice, Ari Miller, Justin underscore Andretti, J Shiny 21, at Natural Hacksaw, Thin Man Within, Slider 91 U.S., Chef Daddy 32, USC 49ers Dodger. That's Armando Martinez, Doc. That's who you were oh, trying boy. to make fun of earlier because the fake Doc and hey, him were feuding hey, on Twitter. Armando. Armando, I ain't the one that you got. I got beef. That's got beef with you. So I know you don't like me. I know you don't like me. And guess what? I don't give a shit. But nice. I'm not the one snapping back at you, pal. Bro, him, him, and fake Doc with that series of tweets was pretty fucking funny this past week. I have what to I, admit. What I tell you after that, I was like, man, this guy kind of sounds like me. I need a fake Doc to go to work with me too and do my job. <laughs> Uh, at Gerald Green the third, at T Hog ninety four, at SV Pageant, Martin Howell seventy one, Tim Morecci, Coleman eight two two, Gobbled Unreal, at Unconvinced Ray. Thanks for being Hall of Fame patrons. We appreciate it. Uh, Hall of Fame patrons. Once you get to your sixth month of uh, seventh month of patron membership, if I haven't already done so, if I haven't already contacted you, please email bookingtheterritory at gmail dot com. That way I can get you your. Pro Wrestling Tees t-shirt or the T Public t-shirt of your choice because that is included in your membership. So please remind me once you get to seven months if I haven't gotten to you by then. All right, so we got to... We got to do some Rolexes here. Doc, you go first. I got. I mean, I, I really think I know who you're going to give it to, but go ahead. Ric Flair, dude. Yeah, I the same yeah. thing here. Uh, it's like, got to be Rick. Yeah, Rick's got to get it. So... Um, uh, what are we going to rate the episode? This is—I th- actually think this is a tough one. I'll go first. Um, to me, just on the strength of Rick at the end and the Horseman at the end, and then also the the Horseman earlier on, where JJ did most of the talking. Um, I, I'm going to give this one, a, give this episode a B. Uh, uh, you got to give actually, it an A, man. I'm going to give mm. it a B plus. I mm. felt like something what, what, was what missing. The fuck? What? I can't make it a B plus. Is there something wrong with that? It's your grade, pal. If you can get it as wrong as you want to. Yeah. I didn't say it was an F. God damn. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a B plus. Doc, what are you giving it? Straight up solid A. Yeah. Right. I am ready to buy. I'm ready to garbage. buy a ticket. I'm yeah. ready to buy a ticket. What else do you want? Now, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. Rick talked me into the building. Fuck yeah, bro. I'm thinking, Doc. I think we ought to drive to where well, you want to go, Greensboro or the Omni? Which one? What, what do you want to put gas Atl- in the car? Atl- well, Atlanta's going to be closer, pal. Yeah, yeah, Atlanta's uh, a man. lot closer. Greensboro's a, a haul. Um, so uh, are we getting a ticket? We're getting in the car. What are we, what are we doing? What, what time are we leaving tomorrow? Well, why don't you come pick me up in your little Prius and let's go? Fuck uh, you, gross. You're an asshole. What is it? You a Prius? Isn't that what you have? What, what do you drive? I don't drive a Prius. I have a Kia Optima. Oh, so oh, much better! Jesus that's, Christ! That's... I, I thought I smelled something. <laughs> you smell what that do you pussy smell? in here. It smells like <laughs> it smells like Badussi in here. It's hey, my wow. car. Smelling like Badussi. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, let's get that one straight, brother. Mm. 
All right. Well, let's keep going. So we 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 y'all both gave it an A, right? Yes. Absolutely. All right. So uh, let's Here's keep the problem going here. 